The sun rises on another blazing hot Nigerian morning. And in the capital Abuja, everyone's already on the move. To work or to school. I'm on my way to a village just outside the city. My destination is a school where the children are being taken on a journey into what could be a better future. A future where new technology gives them the chance to compete with the rest of the world. These children are part of an extraordinary project to bring cheap computing to the developing world. It's called One Laptop Per Child, and every child at this primary school has been given one of the laptops. What happens here could determine whether the whole thing is a success or a failure. 7.30 at Galadima Primary School, and the children who turn up on time are rewarded with a task. Sweeping the playground before lessons can get underway and it's morning assembly. The 300 or so children here are taught by just a handful of teachers. With meagre resources, Nigerian education has to work hard to get results. But now, at this school, they're trying to make a great leap forward. Five years ago, one laptop per child set out to design a simple computer which would cost $100 and give children like these a valuable educational tool. The final product costs closer to $200, but if it makes a difference here, then governments in developing countries around the world may decide it's worth investing in the scheme. The whole project is the brainchild of Nicholas Negroponte, an American digital visionary and academic. The goal of one laptop per child is nothing less than uh, eliminating poverty. And the method is education, and the method within education is to leverage children themselves so that the learning is not just limited to school, but it includes a seamless part of their life. The charity is dependent on local volunteers to turn this vision into reality. And they too are committed to the idea that this is about more than just cheap computers. It's an education project. The laptop is just a, a little part of it, uh, but it's, a, it's, a, it's part of a bigger thing. And it, this is, but you need that uh, laptop to jumpstart and kickstart that revolution. But the laptop's design is at the heart of the project. After all, plenty of corporations are now making cheap computers. So, what's different about this one? Do you mind if I borrow yours? Thanks very much. Let's just have a, a closer look at the laptop. As you can see, it's pretty small and it's supposed to be pretty robust as well. Designed not to let dust in and you're supposed to be able to drop it from a height of five feet without it breaking. I don't think I'm going to try that for now. It's powered by battery. One charge is supposed to last uh, about a day, but there are plans to introduce a ripcord charger so that you'd be able to power it up if you didn't have access to electricity. Once you open it up, the first thing you notice is these two green ears. Now, they not only do they give access to the internet, uh, but they also help form the mesh network, the network which allows uh, every laptop across this school to speak uh, one to another. So this one can speak to this one, can speak to this one. The children can communicate, uh, know when each other's online. And as for the desktop itself, well, it's got a lot of the programs that you might expect on any laptop. So uh, there's, a, there's a word program, there's a music program, there's a, there's a game there, there's a browser to access to the internet, uh, and that also gives the children access to a lot of uh, teaching materials stored uh, and, and easily available for them. There's a calculator, uh, a, a painting uh, program, and it's the camera which has proved the most popular elements on this laptop. Everywhere we've gone, we've seen children using it in the street, around the school, to take pictures and to record video. And it's certainly the playful aspects of the computer, taking snaps with the onboard camera, discovering new games that have really captured the imagination of the children. But they insist they are learning something too. I learn how to write and I learn how to snap and I learn how to draw. 
I use it if my teacher writes a note on the board, she will tell us to store, to copy it and save it. But how is it actually working in the classroom? I know it will be a surprise to you to see that, ah, how can my eyes look round like a ball like this? Hello? That is what is inside. Can you see it very well now? Yes, sir. Can you see? In this particular class, the teacher is using the laptop in a lesson about the structure of the eye. The children have access to information stored on the laptop, and they can also go online. That is, when the internet's working, there are frequent power cuts, so keeping the satellite internet connection alive means powering up a generator. The children are allowed to take their laptops home each day to a village where many still live in pretty basic conditions. Everywhere you see the children using them. Though they're maybe not quite as robust as their makers hoped. A number were broken during the holidays. Still, Galadima is proud that it's part of this project. I, when I saw it, I love it. I just feel, I, um, I don't know whether I would say, let me be a kid again to, in order to collect the computer. <laughs> I'm so excited when I saw the computer with them. Myself, when I saw it, I was highly impressed because everything you are doing now, you have to be computer literate. Without all uh, computer experience, without computer knowledge, I think in the near future, anything one is going to do without knowing anything about computer, it's not going to be easy. They don't always read with the computer. They, they, they find it fun using the computer. Mm. So it's faster for them to learn with the computer. So this topic is uh, addition. And it's clear that parents here are passionate about education. This widowed father keeps his children learning even at home. His son is among those with a laptop but he's making sure his mental arithmetic is up to scratch all the same. He says the computer has made a big difference. It's helping him a lot. Because most of the time he do go out to play, but since they gave him the laptop, whenever you see him, he's busy trying to do something with his laptop. I'm very happy about that. For this boy, the effect has been particularly dramatic. Shebu wasn't doing that well at school, but he's now one of the most expert of laptop users. And at the home he shares with his parents and 15 brothers and sisters, he's been teaching his father a thing or two. By the special grace of God, he will. From what I've seen, I think uh, he will do something to make me a computer literate. I would like to make him a computer engineer. Uh, that's, that's my dream for him. Back at school, Shebu is already showing promise as a computer engineer. Whether it's replacing a broken keyboard in front of a fascinated audience, or helping me with a software problem, Shebu is willing to give it a go. What we're going to try and do is put that on YouTube. It's for the kids to be able to learn learning. I mean, learning by doing. Um, by being inquisitive and discovering things themselves, as opposed to instructionism, where they're being, inst you know, instructed. For teachers with very little experience themselves of computers, it's all been quite a challenge. But the head teacher says this project is important for her whole country, not just her school. We be in Nigeria, a developing country. We need something that will make us to compete with other nations. So the children now, I don't think that now, anywhere, anywhere that I took, anywhere that I take most of them to now, they will be able to compete with any, any child from anywhere. Now there's obviously a huge amount of excitement and enthusiasm about the whole project here, but there's also something of a culture clash developing between the aims of the charity and of the local education system. One laptop per child foresees a world where each child is free to play with the laptop as they wish, learning as they go, even teaching the teacher as they go along. The Nigerian education system is far more regimented and disciplined, so one of them may have to change if all this is to work.
And across town, a rival computing project has taken that message on board and may have a better chance of success than one laptop per child. Well, a few miles from Galadima, one of the biggest names in computing thinks it knows the answer. As soon as you arrive at Jabby Lake Secondary School, you can see that plenty of money has been spent here. The whole school has had a makeover, with new roofs, a lick of paint and a lot of new buildings. The school was refurbished just in time to take part in the trial of another computer aimed at developing countries, this time one made by the microchip giant Intel. 280 of its classmate laptops have been provided by the company. Oxygen gas is giving out. Can you see it? There's an arrow coming from the leaf. In a brand new classroom, the teacher uses an electronic whiteboard. There must be water and carbon dioxide. With teaching material straight from the internet, adverts and all. Well, let's have a closer look at the classmate that these students have been using, the classmate laptop. Now, it's, it's pretty much like a standard PC, a cut-down version of it, really, I suppose. Um, it's smaller, it's more rugged, although it does have these open ports, which uh, may be a bit of an issue uh, when it comes to the dust in the kind of developing countries where it's aimed at. Um, it's cheaper because it doesn't actually have a hard disk or a CD-ROM drive. Instead of the hard disk, it has flash memory. And so it's retailing at about $350 at the moment. Still pretty high price for some of the markets it's aimed at, although Intel says uh, it's going to try and get that price down. Uh, once you open it, it looks pretty much like a standard PC. It's running Windows XP uh, with all the standard programs that you get on a kind of the typical uh, Windows, Intel, PC that you'd, uh, you'd see uh, uh, across the world. So uh, all the Microsoft Word programs, uh, Internet Explorer, uh, Windows Media Player, basically a standard laptop computer. Those children who've been allowed to use the laptops are unsurprisingly pretty enthusiastic about them. It's very nice and I like it. I don't want anybody to get, uh, take it away from me. I was so happy because I never used a computer before. And I was surprised what the computer will look like. And I was happy, excitement. Throughout the day, I was happy. Through the whole day, I was so happy. When I got home, I told my parents I couldn't sleep. I was praying for the next day to come so that I would use the computer. So. Because, you see, we read ahead of teachers because they give us a scheme of what that's the syllabus. All we need to do is just go there, pick a topic, go to the net, type on it, and before you know every information comes out, you read on the topic, when the teacher comes to the class. Instead of her teaching you, you will find out that you're the one teaching the teacher. This system gives the teacher a lot of control over how the pupils use the laptops. They can monitor them from their own computers. And if anything, they're even keener than their students. Would you prefer to go back to the time when you were just talking on the blackboard? No, I prefer this. It, it makes teaching easy and learning easy. It, the, the students, they are interested. It arose their interest. And instead of writing on the chalk all the time, the students can even learn on their own. Even when you are not there, their students are able to learn. And by contrast with the one laptop per child project, here at Jabby Lake, they say they've real data showing that the computers have improved pupil performance. Intel has poured a lot of money into this scheme to make it work. The big boss has even popped by to see how things are going. The prize for the company, if it succeeds, is a big new market in education across the developing world. Though Intel says that this is not a purely commercial project. Who decides to train 150,000 teachers in one country? Who decides to design curriculums that, you know, better suited for kids around the country? Who pays us for that? Intel is deciding to do it because it knows that that's how you grow an economy, that's how you empower people, that's where our focus is driven. You're telling me Intel has become a, a charitable organization and not for profit? No, like I said, no, no, no. If you make some money on the side, but the overall goal, how did we let, get here in the first case? You know if it's for the economics, you know, this, this would be the best place to start. But when you look at the growth of a people and knowing that these are potential users of the future, 
these are people that require to be empowered economically. You want to focus on their growth, like we usually say at Intel. If you empower the client, the client consequently empowers you. So we're virtually empowering a generation that orthodoxy people wouldn't look at. It's worth remembering that the Intel classmate costs twice as much as the one laptop per child machine. But perhaps the biggest difference is the level of control over how the computers are used. No chance here of taking it home to show mum and dad. The classmates are all packed away and stored at the end of each lesson. But to find out who's going to win this battle, it's time to head into Abuja and meet the civil servants and ministers who will decide whether they can afford to give more Nigerian children a laptop. Well, we've now seen two different schemes, the one laptop per child charity and Intel's commercial classmate scheme. But committing to either of them in a way which would give more than just a handful of children access to a laptop is going to cost the Nigerian government an awful lot of money. And it's not yet clear that it's prepared to commit those kind of funds. First stop is the department which runs the capital's education system. In this country, local government has power and money. The top civil servant here seems cautious. Where's Galadine? The location of all the schools. Ah. But she's also more impressed by the Intel classmate computer. I experiment, especially with the Intel classmate PC in the Jabi Junior Secondary School. We're able to notice that those who were exposed to the use of the um, laptop performed better than those who didn't. So it sort of bridged the gap, especially in the area of acquiring useful knowledge and assisting the teacher again to teach. Then, after protracted negotiations, we finally get to see the man who really matters, Nigeria's education minister. Last year, the previous government talked of buying a million laptops from OLPC. But now, the whole idea of using computers to kickstart development seems to have gone out of fashion. Most of our primary school people are resident in rural areas, characterized by lack of electricity, lack of water, and other educational infrastructures. What is going to be a sense of introducing one laptop per child where they don't have seats to sit down and learn, where they don't have uniforms to wear to school, where they don't have facilities. Back in Galadima, you can see why a government might think that improving the basic facilities of its schools was a higher priority than buying laptops for every child. Mind you, when I asked the pupils here how they'd feel if this experiment ended, they were pretty clear in their views. If I came in tomorrow and said, we're going to take your laptops away and you'll never be able to use them again, what would you be, happy or sad? The people running one laptop per child concede that things are looking better for the Intel Classmate project, but they refuse to admit defeat. This is an educational project, not a laptop project, on, uh, in comparison to the um, commercial project, which is just to sell hardware to children. This is not selling hardware to children, this is a whole educational project. So in the long run, I believe that we will actually succeed better than, than the commercial project. But in the short run, maybe they will achieve more success. In the short term, the future of the whole One Laptop Per Child project is uncertain. But its founders believe they are making the case that education in the developing world needs the impetus that cheap computing could offer. A movement has already started, there's just no question. And what's going to happen is it will accelerate because it's not so much a few people who have evangelized an idea, it's now contagious. And a, you know, the virus is out and there are people who have caught the bug and they are so passionate about it. And I'm seeing it in Africa and Asia and South America. This is now un unstoppable. It's like an avalanche.
The idea of putting a computer in the hands of every child is a powerful one. It does seem to be changing lives in this particular Nigerian village. But it may take many years before this becomes a common sight. Bye. 